This is Thursday, February 16th, 2012. We are in Natick, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morris Institute Library's Continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan. Our cameraman is Dan McDermott of Natick Pegasus. We are privileged to have with us today Richard Brenneman, Jr. Welcome, Dick. Thank you. May I ask when you were born? I was born on March 30th, 1925. And where were you born? I was born in Huntington, Pennsylvania. And where is Huntington? <clears throat> Next door to uh, State College, Central Pennsylvania. Okay. And what town do you currently live in? I currently live in Natick. And how long have you lived in Natick? Off and on since 1938. Your marital status? Uh, uh, single. Single. Was married. Mm -hmm. Do you have children? Uh, yes. How many? Five. Do you have grandchildren? Uh, yeah, six. Mm. Great grandchildren? Any great grandchildren? Uh, five. Good for you. Now tell us uh, what Natick was like just before World War II. <coughs> Small. Uh, I lived in West Natick on Hartford Street. Yeah, that was rural then. Mm -hmm. uh, it has changed. <laughs> And how did you get to Natick High School and back? There was a bus pickup, mm -hmm. but most of the time, I uh, way back from sports, I would summer ride and mm -hmm. walk up Bowden Lane. And <laughs> and what class in Nat of Natick High did you graduate? Uh, 43, 1943. And I understand you got a special honor. What honor was that? In Natick High School? Mm -hmm. Did I get an honor? <laughs> I understand you were voted, uh, you had the best something. What oh, was that? I don't have the slightest idea. Well, uh, I heard you were voted had the best physique at Natick High School. Uh, I just don't remember. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, uh, did you play sports at Natick High? Hmm? Did you play sports? Uh, football. Football. Is there anything else you remember about your days at Natick High or Natick in general? That was. No, I'll answer you no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, everything uh, back then, yeah, you know, it's a little bit foggy. Mm -hmm. uh, from uh, high school, I went directly into the Navy, and mm -hmm. uh, that was one of the times I didn't live in the Navy. Okay. So where and when did you enter the military? Uh, I think I went in June 1943. And why did you pick the Navy, or did the Navy pick you? Like many things, I, I volunteered. Mm -hmm. huh. And did family or friends join the service when you did? Probably. Uh, you know, the people in my graduating class were all um, mm -hmm. either drafted or volunteered. It was mm -hmm. just scattered. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, okay, where did you go for basic training? Uh, Newport, Rhode Island. 
And can you tell us what basic training in Newport was like? <coughs> uh, spit and polish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any, um, anything else about it? Uh, last time I slept in a hammock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Was there anything you liked about basic training or disliked about it? Uh, there wasn't much I liked, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, like all basic training, it mm -hmm. was, uh, uh, remember to polish your shoes and, uh, March and parade. Mm -hmm. I don't think I learned much there. But uh. now, did you receive any advanced or specialized training beyond basic? I went from basic training to mm -hmm. gunner's meat school in Newport, and after that, I went to submarine school in New London, Connecticut. And why did you uh, go to submarine school? I was 18 and everything was an adventure. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> what did you know about submarines at the time? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what did I? What did you know? What did you know at a, as an eighteen-year-old? What did you know about submarines at that time? I knew nothing. <laughs> uh, you know, it was an opportunity to do something. Mm -hmm. Different. That's why I volunteered. Uh, I ended up uh, uh, serving two years and uh, a little over two years in submarines. Mm -hmm. I was uh, from uh, submarine school. I was assigned to uh, a new submarine in. Mm -hmm. Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. uh, lived on it for two years. <clears throat> uh, it was quite a ride. Uh -huh. uh. Well, let's get back to uh, New London and submarine school. What do you remember about that? Submarine school. Part of the training was uh, going to see and a submarine that was built in 1917, the old O-boat. Mm -hmm. Everything was mechanical. I remember that. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing in submarine school was your ability to come out and escape hatch and get to the surface uh, 50 foot higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was standard training. Mm -hmm. All that was aimed, uh, uh, probably some other, of scaring mm -hmm. chickens out of the coop. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, if you could pass uh, going to sea on an old boat, and swimming to the surface with uh, moms and lawn, mm -hmm. uh, you were. Uh, a candidate to go to sea on a mm -hmm. submarine. Okay. And how long were you in training at submarine school? Uh, it was, I was for hurry up days. Mm -hmm. I was probably there for 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. So now you are um, in New Hampshire. Do you remember the name of the sub? Yeah. Uh, scabbard fish, S C A B B A R D F I S H. 
number 397. And this was a brand new submarine. Mm -hmm. Tell us what some of the differences were between what you were training on and what you were about to be assigned to. <laughs> Mainly um, size. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the scabbard force was uh, uh, 311 feet long. Yeah, that's like a football field. Mm. Uh, Sub at that point was um, 27 foot wide. It was a mansion compared to the old boat. Mm -hmm. mm. So you're in New Hampshire and you're assigned a, to a brand new sub. How often did you go out to sea? Well, after uh, they launched it, you know, they were building it up there. Mm -hmm. uh, went into a training period that uh, uh, took us down the East Coast to the Panama Canal and out to uh, uh, Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. And every place we stopped there was uh, additional training either for gunnery, torpedoes, mm -hmm. or learning how to operate the boat. Mm -hmm. Now at the time, what was your rank? I was uh, seaman first class when uh, I was assigned to the scabbard fish. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I was a gunner's mate second class when uh, I resigned from the submarines. Mm. Okay. And what were your duties on the sub? You have to ask that or understand that question in two aspects. One was straight operational. Mm -hmm. uh, we stood uh, two watches a day, four hours apiece. Mm -hmm. uh, I served as uh, uh, a lookout, mm -hmm. helmsman, mm -hmm. and bow plainsman. Mm -hmm. <coughs> One of the unique things <coughs> about submarines was to qualify and get that extra pay. In fact, just to remain in submarines, you had to understand and be able to perform uh, any basic operation in any compartment of the boat and uh, you were generally given uh, one patrol to accomplish that mm -hmm. and that's when you became entitled to wear dolphins. Mm -hmm. uh, So tell us a little more about that trip you took to Pearl Harbor. From here to Pearl Harbor? Mm -hmm. That's one long way. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, a submarine in those days, mm -hmm. uh, we could average, um, I'll say it in English terms, 10 miles an hour. and. Uh, that was a long way from Panama to mm -hmm. Pearl Harbor. And during that trip, you know, you uh, practice diving, all emergency mm -hmm. procedures. Um, now, you were pretty busy. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Did you see uh, the enemy at any time? Did I? Did you see the enemy at any time during your trip? 
Yes, ma'am, we did. Ooh. We made five successful war patrols. Uh, we, we were shot at. Uh, we were depth charged. Uh, we were bombed. And we made it back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell us a little more about uh, all, about all that. Uh, <laughs> Let me just tell you one incident that mm -hmm. remains in my mind. Mm -hmm. We sank a Japanese submarine off the shores of Honolulu. Mm. It was pure luck that uh, we saw him and he didn't see us. Mm -hmm. mm. Do you remember when that, uh, that took place? Uh, that was probably in November 1944. Uh, I'd like to just expound uh, on that briefly, I hope. Expound away. Um, you know, you watch submarine things on television, mm -hmm. the movies, everything is boom, boom, boom. Uh, that's not quite so. Mm -hmm. After we spotted that submarine, it uh, took uh, hours of tracking mm -hmm. that sub before we got in a position to put up the periscope, make the last uh, range bearing thing on mm -hmm. it. Then we fired uh, two torpedoes, both hit the submarine. Um, you know, it sank almost immediately. Uh, we came to the surface and there were three survivors. Uh, uh, two wouldn't uh, touch the uh, lifeline that we were trying. We needed to uh, pick up uh, uh, survivors for information purpose. And, uh, we uh, picked up um, Sasaki, was, it turned out to be his name, mm -hmm. and I was uh, gunner's mate, and uh, we got him uh, pulled out of the water. I was um, ordered to get my Tommy gun and get down and make sure that uh, uh, he didn't do anything out of line. Mm. Uh, it was, if you've never been on a submarine, we stopped to pick him up. A uh, submarine will roll and roll and roll. And uh, here I am with a uh, Tabi gun and uh, uh, three members of the life-saving crew on board. Mm -hmm. uh, and boy, I kept my finger off the, finger off the trigger on that Tommy gun. <laughs> and we got him down below. And uh, they tried to question me. He was very young. Uh, Japanese sailor, mm -hmm. and uh, after they found out that uh, we'd sunk the I-365, um, he became my responsibility. Uh, I took him back to the mm, rear torpedo room where I lived, chained him to his bunk, and it was my job for uh, the next two or three weeks to uh, make sure that he was uh, fed and uh, given whatever 
care he needed mm -hmm. before we got back to Midway Island. And uh, last I saw of Sasaki, he was about uh, five foot tall. We turned him over to a Marine uh, detachment. These guys are all six foot tall with rifles, and I felt sorry for the guy. Uh, and the uh, uh, last I ever heard of him. Mm -hmm. While he was under your care and protection, did he speak any English? How did you communicate? Uh, he knew no English whatsoever. We did everything with uh, hand mm -hmm. gestures, and uh, he probably learned a few words <laughs> from. He he was on board for uh, two to three weeks, mm -hmm. as I remember it. Mm -hmm. So he probably learned a few words. Mm -hmm. And he didn't try anything on you or anything? Oh, no, no. Uh, you mentioned uh, earlier your sub uh, being attacked with death charges. Now, of course, people have seen that in the movies. Tell us what that was like. We were death charged. Um, uh, oh, four or five different occasions. Uh, one was very serious. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, a depth charge, you know, it's a little bit different than when you see it on television. Um, a depth charge makes two noises. One is whack, which is the detonator, then there's the boom. And if there's a delay between whack and boom, you're fairly safe. But when you don't hear the whack, just a boom, they are close. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were depth charged on that occasion for <clears throat> four hours in the East China Sea. And <clears throat> After the first um, salvo, I, I remember there were six step charges, uh, uh, and we could hear the destroyer, you know, chugging overhead. Yeah, we got deep enough so that uh, uh, yeah, it was fairly, fairly safe. Uh, we ended up at. Uh, 500 feet, which was below recommended depth, but uh, uh, we did it. And we had <coughs> subsequent depth charge attacks, but none that close. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, if you can hear that whack, boom, uh, you know, you felt safe. Uh, 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 our perhaps um, best service that we did was later on in the war when we were assigned to um, lifeguard duty. That means you pick up a, a pilot or airplane crews mm -hmm. when they were shot down or uh, or force landed, and we picked up uh, 22 airmen. And was this over a specific part of the Pacific Ocean, or just kind of wherever you were? Uh, we were. <clears throat> Of the five patrols, we were in different areas. Uh, we picked up people off of Iwo Jima. Mm -hmm. 
we picked up people off of Hanshu. Uh, it was funny. Uh, one of our pickups, we went very close in the shore, and we picked this guy up, and he had an English accent. He was off of a British carrier, mm -hmm. off of uh, Japan. This is the uh, last couple of months of the war. And I was uh, shocked to hear him talk. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we pick these guys up and either take them back to uh, Properly Guam, or mm -hmm. sometimes we would meet another submarine on his way back to, say, Guam, and transfer the guys. Mm -hmm. You know, at night time, uh, it gets close, and we had rubber boats, and we put them in, and they pulled them across to the other boat. Mm -hmm. uh, Uh, it, it got a little bit crowded at one point where, you know, <coughs> uh, submarines in those days had a, <coughs> a normal uh, crew of 82 people. And when you got um, uh, 10 extra guys on board, uh, uh, airmen, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it got a little bit crowded. I can understand that, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, it was um, uh, a, a different uh, operation. Every patrol, every day was mm -hmm. different. Mm. Uh, sort of. But, you know, no matter what was going on, you had to uh, stand two operational watches, mm -hmm. plus uh, take care of your specialty. Uh, uh, my technical job was take care of those guns um, on deck. <clears throat> uh, picture you have shows 20 millimeter uh, gun. Mm -hmm. Grab that. Uh, and this uh, is the shot. Yeah. Okay. And you would be so kind as to show that for our. Uh, that's the a 20 blue one okay. is many years later. That's mm -hmm. Tom uh, mm -hmm. on the fort mm -hmm. deck there. And Tom's one of your sons. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. It was a Cub Scout. What do you do with Cub Scouts? Uh. <laughs> well, let's get let's get back to. Um, to the latter days of the war. You're mentioning uh, Midway, Iwo Jima, Honshu, some of the hot spots. Uh, did you see any of the action taking place? The action, uh, except I, we weren't there mm -hmm. uh, at the time that was going on. Mm -hmm. uh, Midway was uh, a submarine base. Mm -hmm. as well as an air base, and uh, uh, we would mm, uh, fuel up on Midway, uh, load up with supplies, mm -hmm. take off for Japan. And uh, at that point, it was a 10-day trip to Japan, and uh, you did whatever you had to, and mm -hmm. then you'd start back to Midway Island because you were running out of diesel fuel, you were running out of supplies, and um, any place looked good, even Midway. Uh, and uh, after a while, as the war went on, uh, we would uh, do the same thing that Guam or Saipan. That mm -hmm. was refuel, rest up, uh, 
take off again in operation. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the advantages of being on a submarine after a patrol, you um, got two weeks of rest and recreation. Two weeks. Two weeks. Mm -hmm. No duties. You know, the relief crew would uh, repaint the boat, make repairs, mm -hmm. uh, put in. But you had uh, two weeks uh, to um, uh, rest, drink mm -hmm. beer, play football, mm -hmm. uh, baseball, what have you. And then it was back to the sub again and mm -hmm. repractice and take off on another patrol. Okay. Uh, do you remember any of your uh, submates any fr make any friends while you were on duty? Um, there were a couple of guys that I met when I was first uh, signed in the scabbard fish. We were <clears throat> remained friends for forever for them. Mm -hmm. <coughs> At this point, I don't know of anybody mm -hmm. who was on the boat with me. You know, that was um, almost 70 years ago, mm -hmm. and um, uh, but we were good friends for Would you care to uh, mention their names? Yeah, one of them was uh, Forrest Cowgill. Mm -hmm. He was from Oregon. And the other one was uh, Leon Stilkey, who was from Maine. And, and, you know, we were all young kids and mm -hmm. We uh, uh, served together for two years. Okay, let's um, let's bring you up to say the spring of 1945. Do you remember what you were doing when VE Day was announced? Yep. We were on our way back to Guam, and uh, word came through to us about halfway between Honshu and Guam, and, um, um, you know, somebody woke me up and said the war is over. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just continued uh, uh, on route down to Guam. And, mm -hmm. um, went from Guam to, uh, and uh, we talked, uh, you know, they didn't know what to do with us <laughs> at that point. So mm -hmm. we were basically parked down in and uh, we talked for, uh, uh, let's see, during September and October, and uh, <coughs> we got back to uh, San Francisco uh, first part of uh, December '45. Now you mentioned you resigned. Uh, was this from the subservice or? Hmm? Uh, you, uh, you mentioned earlier in the interview that you had resigned. Oh. <laughs> so what happened that? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we're out 
Mare Island, and uh, <coughs> you know, everybody was, uh, you know, the war's over, everybody's mm -hmm. going home. I used the word resign loosely. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> I was offered uh, an opportunity to get my discharge in mm -hmm. Toledo, Ohio. So I took it. <coughs> okay. So you took a discharge, and when were you discharged? Uh, in, um, I think it was March 1946. Mm. Okay. And where were you discharged? In Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> Simply because Boston was full, mm -hmm. and Toledo was taking people on, so mm -hmm. I volunteered. <laughs> Again with a <the> volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some people never learn. <laughs> so you got discharged in Toledo, Ohio. Uh, did you get, go back to Natick after the uh, war? I came back to Natick. Mm -hmm. And what did it, uh, what were your feelings about coming back home? Uh, 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 feelings were good, you know, my... <laughs> Friends were coming back here, mm -hmm. and um, my wife to be was here. She was born in Natick. Mm -hmm. And what's your wife's name? Uh, was Joan Powers. Joan Powers. Oh, Powers. P -O -W -E -R -S. Okay. W e r s. At you know, at that point. Mm, um, I took a job whenever you mm -hmm. <coughs> could find something. I worked on construction for mm -hmm. a short while and decided I didn't want to dig dishes, uh, ditches, mm -hmm. and uh, took uh, government advantage of going back to school. And um, what did you major in school? Chemistry. Chemistry. And where'd you go to school? Uh, Boston University. That was a different operation then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Much smaller. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what did you do with the chemistry degree? I worked um, for a couple of years for American Cyanamid down in Stamford, Connecticut. Uh, at that point, I had a um, uh, wife, two kids. Mm -hmm. uh, I took a job with uh, Arthur D. Little uh, in Cambridge. I worked for them for uh, 35 years. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned you had five children or four? Hmm? Uh, you mentioned you had children. Oh, uh, uh, one by one I end up with five. Okay. Tom's the oldest. Uh, mm -hmm. did, best looking. Okay. Did any of your children uh, enter the military? Uh, Tom, briefly. Uh, uh -huh. Were you drafted, Tom? <laughs> Not <laughs> voluntarily. <laughs> uh, uh, how about yeah, any of your grandchildren? No. Uh, after the war, did you join any uh, service organizations, such as the American Legion or VFW? Uh, there was. <coughs> there was um, a subvet organization. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was largely a volunteer thing. Um, uh, I, they finally, um, uh, I guess, couldn't find people or funding to run anymore, mm -hmm. went out of business. And, uh, well, they didn't go out of business. 
they merge with uh, uh, there's a current submarine veterans mm -hmm. association, but ours was distinguished with uh, World War Two numbers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said we had conventions, uh, uh, quite a few places, and uh, I went to a number of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Are you um, active in any organizations now? No. Yeah. And I take it you're retired now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, whatever that means. <laughs> Dick, is there anything else you'd like to say uh, to those who are watching, of, such as uh, what, 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 what did service mean to you? Well, uh, the point that I was in, uh, you know, there was a general feeling in the country that everybody was behind you. We were attacked mm -hmm. and uh, we were fulfilling our duty. And is there anything else you'd like to say as we conclude this interview? No, it's been a unique experience, Maureen, and mm -hmm. I want to thank you for being allowed to say a few words. <clears throat> <laughs> well, Richard Brenneman, Jr., thank you so much for uh, taking part in the Native Veterans Oral History Project. You're welcome. Uh, okay.